think we are live. Yeah. All right. What's up, everybody? In today's video. <laughs> okay. A um, couple things. We have some BITCHing we need to do. Uh, I have a little list here of stuff I want to go through with you. Um, I have some art. So if you stay tuned till like the end, I have some art that I want to go through. I have. I want to go through something I came across um, in regards to World War II stuff. You know, I'm not a big World War II person. I'm more of a World World War One person. And, um, sorry, my cat's being a little frisky. Um, and yeah, and then I want to, like I said, I want to talk about some art. Um, I don't know really where to start here. Um, I guess first, uh, first, a uh, couple days late with this tea, um, as usual, but, uh, Daryl Brooks, the beautiful chocolate man that ran over all of those white Christians, um, in Waukesha last November, um, I guess he got life in prison or whatever, which is, uh, I don't know, you guys, like, as a Wisconsin citizen and someone who has to, like, pay taxes to keep these people in prison, I'm, like, this, that type of, like, person just needs to be put down, you know, um, I thought I was watching. Hey, Rockshot, what's going on? Um, sorry, I wear the same shirt. Okay, <laughs> no, yeah, someone like Daryl Brooks just needs to be put down. Okay, um, I don't want to sit here and pay for him to sit for another like 50, 60 years in prison, assuming he doesn't get taken out in prison. You know, um, so like, why do I have to sit there and pay for him? You know, it's like we have one problem, and with like how corrupt our justice system is, we have to create like twenty other problems just to deal with the one problem when could have just been done with you know i think he should have been h-a-n-g-i-n-g ing or whatever from some like high rise in milwaukee or wherever you know at, sort of like in the old days with pirates you know like the pirates ye be warned you know and then they're just like their decaying bodies are just sort of hanging there to remind people that if you take your car and you run over a whole bunch of people, there are going to be severe consequences for you. You're not going to be, you know, coddled and, like, held through the system. Like, that judge or whatever, she looks like the type of woman who, like, has sex with black guys. In my opinion, my conspiracy allegedly. So I don't know if that's why she was, like, talking to him like he was a child. But, oh, gosh. I'm like, happy that, you know, maybe the families get some sort of justice. But, again, they have to pay now, the families, as Wisconsin citizens, pay this state to keep him locked up you know i just something is like off there and we're going to talk about some other things where things are just like fundamentally not right right now um and i remember truman capote way back in like the 60s like talked in several um interviews um his one with his interview you should i think it's on youtube his interview with william f buckley like the firing line or whatever is really really well done um and he, even him, was talking about, like, the concept of, like, putting someone on death row. Like, you need to, if, you, if you're going to put someone on death row and, you know, it's confirmed, blah, blah, blah. Like, you just need to do it and be done with it. You can't, like, push and ping someone through another, like, 10, 20, 30 years of, like, appeals and moving around. And just, like, all the bureaucracy and the corruption in the system. Like, that in itself is, like, cruel, you know? Like, you just got to be done with it, you know? So, I just, I don't know, the justice system... This isn't very just, in my opinion. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so the justice system is fucked. Truman Capote talks a lot about this. I don't know if you've read In Cold Blood. I definitely recommend all of the lexicon of Capote books. I love him. The way he writes is fantastic. Even, like, his little shorter stories, um, definitely recommend him. But his thoughts on... So, as, and I trust his opinion because he's someone who visited so many different prisons. You know, and, and there's a difference between... Um, the type of person who needs to be locked up because they're a threat to society. Like, there's the difference between, like, the psychopath, like, the clinically insane, and, like, someone who, like, just hits someone in a moment of anger. You know what I mean? Um, and Truman Capote, I think, knew better than anyone the sort of subtle differences and how to rehabilitate certain people that are capable and have the capacity to be rehabilitated. But then when you just need to just you know, cut him off. So Daryl Brooks can rot in hell, obviously. Um, but we don't need people like that. We don't need to have, like this happened a year ago, you know, he should have been dealt with last November. You know, he should have just been, it's done. You know, you don't need someone like that, like, just like being, uh, like, 
I just don't want to fucking pay for him. You know, it's it's a frustrating. And I'll couple this with there are a whole bunch of town, signs around my town for this like anti crime bill they're pushing, where they're looking for more money to go towards the police in this town so they can deal with, I guess, the crime issues. And I said this in my live stream with Sacha this week, and I just have this like really eerie feeling that all of this like anti crime push is going to end up blowing up in our faces in a couple years down the road. Um, because here we are, like, if, if you ask any of the police officers in my town, okay, all 90% of their time is sent, spent in a specific area of town with all the government housing. It's all the area that has our greatest strength. It has all of our diversity. But there are so many issues there, and that's where all of their resources and time and energy go into uh, managing, I guess, this certain couple block radius in town, okay? So I have to pay more money so that the police can like do uh keep a handle on that situation you know and i just don't really see that as sustainable just like trying to throw more and more money at the at clearly the diversity issue you know um like you can't have a whole bunch of different um cultures all in the same zip code without a heavy police state you know and that's where all of this is going towards is as uh, immigrants not immigrants, aliens, like, flood into this country from the south, the north, every which way, you know. We have zero border in this country, zero border in this town, you know. So everyone just, like, comes here, and then you need, like, a heavy police state to keep everyone sort of etherized and under control. People like me, people like you, people like 99% of this town don't need a heavy police state, you know. So now I have to walk around with all these extra police officers. And we've talked about this before, how it's not like in the Home Alone movies, you know, that type of, like, sort of chubbier, um, you know, two-door uh, police car, and it's just sort of like a normal hometown cop. No, these are very sleek, militarized, they have all this advanced equipment, you know, and it's like, I have to give more money to that when, like, in my head, this is just going to be used against people like you and me, the MAGA types, uh, you know, to... to, 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 to to do away with us really you know what i mean so it's it's frustrating and i also have to say with this anti-crime they have these like posters everywhere they have what i assume is like this star for like a sheriff you know like they have that like um badge and i realized how eerily similar it is to the star of david and <laughs> and i just laugh because if you think that we are governed by rules and laws you are mistaken we are governed by signs and symbols it's like a symbol based governing system and just to see like the star of david slash the sheriff badge star it just um it's a little interesting a little interesting so i'm i'm not sure what to do in the situation i did go and now here i am <laughs> i'll be honest with you i went and like i had to update my address to vote in i guess like a week and a half or whatever so i you know <laughs> huffed up to the municipal clerk's office hoofed it up there you know breathing heavily with my asthma and um <laughs> i'm like please can i change my address and uh so i am like i guess registered to vote now um and i want to vote in only in the sense that so in Wisconsin, we have these two people running. It's the incumbent, Ron Johnson, who is like, bah, so boring. Um, but he's running against Mandela Barnes, who is this dumb gap tooth, this beautiful chocolate man, okay? And like, if he wins, it's over. I mean, this country's already over, but like, it's fucking over. You know what I mean? So I'm just like voting so that he doesn't win. Um, yeah, like... It just because it's, it's like someone like him, okay, and then they let all the prisoners out of jail. So then Daryl Brooks, someone like him, who should have just been hang, hung, you know, um, like now he's just walking around again because they let their little friends, you know, run amok, uh, all the Mugatos and all of that. So I don't know, you guys. Like I'm gonna, like I said, probably vote just because I don't want that other person winning, but I don't like believe in the system. It's entirely corrupt. I don't think my vote changes anything. Um, and it's again it's just not sustainable you know it's like we're just trying to keep the dam from breaking and it's like there's cracks everywhere there's water coming everywhere and it's like when is the time to just let it go and just like ride with the fucking current you know sorry i'm eating some salmon so yeah um <laughs> 
here is some um, pop culture news. Uh, Kim Kardashian was spotted at the Polo Lounge in Beverly Hills with none other than Ivanka Trump this week. They had a nice three-hour meal in the <laughs> in the Polo Lounge. Um, I find it very interesting and very weird. I think Ivanka is like cool or like could be cool, but her like K I K E husband has to go, you know. But her K-I-K-E husband is the main investor in Kim Kardashian's line of form-fitting wear called Skims. Which is really weird, because that came out when Jared Kushner was, like, Trump was still in office. And Jared Kushner, remember, he had this, like, huge list of responsibilities in the Trump administration. And he had this huge list of stuff to do, but he still found time to go and invest in Kim Kardashian's um, fashion line, which is like so, still so weird to me, and I'll keep bringing it up because it, there's something there that is, um, there's like really off, you know. And Kim Kardashian is BFFs with Hillary Clinton. She's BFFs with Hillary Clinton's satanic daughter, um, her offspring of the offspring of Satan. Um, and so the fact that Kim K and Ivanka are like BFFs, it's just a little weird, you know. All of that is very weird. And then there's like the Kanye element, which we'll get to because I have more thoughts on that. But if you guys remember, like. All like the Simpson type predictions, they all think that in the Simpsons world that Ivanka Trump is going to be like is gonna win the twenty twenty four election. So how we're gonna get there from where we are now, I'm not sure. But I think it probably has to do with little conversations like this in the back back room of the polo lounge in Beverly Hills. Um I don't know. I just think it's a little bit weird, you know? And I have um evidence. Here they are, Kim K and Ivanka. If you they're just friends you know and here's jared kushner kim k and ivanka and they're just you know wealthy and full of plastic surgery and it's just like why you know um something is very weird there i don't know what it is exactly but i'm gonna figure it out where to go to next um i guess we'll just stay in this realm i because it all, like, loops together. I saw, like, Paris, Paris Hilton put up this video of she was, like, releasing some perfume, I guess, in, like, India or something. And, like, the welcome that she got in India was insane. And it reminded me of when Trump went to India. And, like, Indians, and I'm talking dot, not feather here, okay? Um, those Indians, like, they know how to, like put on a fucking show okay with all like the regalia and the flowers and they have like their own they have like their own indigenous culture you know so it's like cool to like see all of like the pomp and circumstance from that side of the world and they just like they loved trump you know and it was it was such a cool time um you know and to see like trump and like the indian is it prime minister or i don't know it was just it was cool you know and obviously trump has issues but i was like um I don't know. It was just, there was the, I guess, the illusion of hope there, in my opinion. And um, I was seeing, I've been seeing people go back and forth, like Trump or Kanye 2024. And I don't think either would be a good option. I mean, Trump would be a better option, I guess, than Kanye. Kanye cannot, just like Mandela Barnes, he's that beautiful chocolate man running for senator in Wisconsin. These people cannot get into power, okay? Like, it's over, but, like, then it's, like, really over, okay? Kanye is one of those people who, they, he supports this Afrocentric idea, this Marxist idea, okay, that we're all from Africa, okay? That there's this Black Eve, okay, and that we're all descended from this Black Eve. We all crawled out of Africa, and that is fundamentally wrong, okay? You could, Go check out Robert Zepper. Um, he dives into this greatly. But you also don't even need to like even think about it. You can just use your fucking eyes and realize that we are not the same species. <laughs> we do not have a common ancestor. I'm not sure exactly where uh, my race of people came from. There's like the Hyperborean. There's like just there's a whole different couple different discussions which are really really interesting. But the idea that uh, we're all from Africa is something Kanye like believes in you know and that's fine like he can believe in whatever he wants but like i don't want that type of mentality in i guess it doesn't even like matter you know like kanye i guess is one of those like black hebrew jewish type people now which because i'm into like sort of outre um 
I guess, quote unquote, weirder stuff, I'll have like empathy and compassion in the sense that maybe I just don't understand the whole black Hebrew thing. But it seems like Kanye stumbled onto like one or two 40 minute like bitch shoot videos and just like <laughs> gobbled it all up. Because I remember when I was back in college, yes, I went to college, University of Miami, um, not Miami University in Ohio. I mean, the University of Miami down in Florida. Um, when I was there, the carpet muncher Donna Shalala was still there, and she is BFFs with uh, Hillary Clinton. So that was always a little bit strange. Um, but even when I was at college, they were like the whole like black Hebrew like, and it was weird because there are so many Jews like in Florida, like especially like the east coast of Florida, certain parts of the east coast of Florida, from like Miami up to like West Palm Beach. <laughs> um, very very jewish but it's also like segregated like there are jewish clubs and then there are like christian clubs you know like dinner clubs that type of thing um it's kind of cool in a way i don't know but so kanye's like into the whole like we was kang's thing but anyone who knows anything knows that like egypt like ancient egyptians were of like a completely different genetic race than the people that populate egypt now and like all of africa i think they were like more related to the Hittites or something, right? It's like, there's like the three Noah's sons, like Japhet and like all the different ones. But like Egypt, specifically, were like a race of people. They had like different like skull types. Their bodies were, it was like a different like species in a way, you know? Um, I'm not saying, I don't know if they were the ones who like built the pyramids or anything like that, but they, um, that race of people ruled Egypt early before Christ in my from what i understand and like kind of gets all of this stuff like confused um and i just like i don't want anything to do with it you know um but yeah kind of yeah he, he's big into the whole like afrocentric marxist idea of we all come from africa which is just simply fundamentally not true and you see people on the right who are just like just gobbling up all of this kanye stuff and i've said like from how many videos ago where i'm like kanye is does not care about white people kanye is not the answer to this and from what i'm hearing like the american first crowd and like nick fuentes and all them love kanye so much and i just don't get it i guess um i don't get it at all and he talks about like um like black entertainment you know how um how how they're still slaves you know in the black entertainment industry because these contracts that are made by jews in like the media um, that all these black people have to sign to, you know, to make the millions and millions of dollars in music and the NFL and the NBA, you know, and they're just, they're just slaves, you know, the black entertainment were still used and abused, you know, but I think if you ask most people in this country, most heritage people in this country, you know, we don't necessarily want to see like a whole bunch of, um, it, 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 it's just straight up black, you know, it's not even diverse. It's just straight up black in every single one of these like sports things, you know? So I don't understand how it's like hundred percent black and they make millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, yet they're still victims somehow. And I'm like, I can't even pronounce their fucking names. Like if you look at the, like the Milwaukee Bucks, like their roster, like Ante Gabuanga and like Abi Gaba, and I can't even fucking pronounce their names. It's like, that's not entertaining to people, you know? <laughs> so like, uh, I'm not saying that like people don't get like shitty contracts or anything like that, but it's, it's again, it's this like slavery stuff that I, it's just, it's gross. And like Kanye doesn't interview well, like I've been trying to watch more and more clips, like he was on Lex Friedman or something. Oh, that was a hard one to watch you guys. He seems like, I guess he's like some Soviet era Jew or something. That was like a really brutal one. I lasted like five minutes maximum but like kind of doesn't interview well like i feel like he should put all of these thoughts and stuff into a song or like something else a little bit more artistic because i remember like five years ago when he came out with that like ye versus the people uh track or whatever i thought that was kind of good like the energy in that song like i'd play it now but i'm just gonna get copyright um i thought it was like pretty good you know i feel like i got the point across but he doesn't interview well at all so it's like i don't know if he knows, like, I don't think he's, like, really helping his purpose at all, because he just, it just kind of sounds like gibberish up there, you know, and y'all know I'm, like, schizophrenic, it don't make sense at all, but I feel like I could do a little bit better job up there than Kanye does, and what I don't understand is, like, Nigeria, I guess, is a country in Africa, I remember, 
I remember, you know how, like, you have to read aloud? When, I remember, like, social studies class, and, like, you, you, like, go around the room, and, like, you read a paragraph, and then the next person reads a paragraph. And, um, or maybe it isn't like that in other schools, but little Catholic schoolboy me, that's what we sort of did to get through the material. And this one girl, she's like, <laughs> she's like, comes across like Nigeria in the reading, and she's like, N -n -n Nigeria. <laughs> and I remember everyone just like laughing, and we're like in fucking fifth grade, you know? Um, but here, like, Nigeria is like very, very anti Christian and like kill Christians all the time, like this week, you know? And I just. If Trump, if Kanye like cares about Christians and he cares about black people, you would think, and he cares about Africa so much, you know, like you would think maybe that's a good place to start. Plus they have their own entire continent. So maybe we can convince Kanye to like take them all over there and create this Wakanda that he believes they all can do once they start. <laughs> I need to move on. I really need to move on. Um, but yeah, the Kanye stuff is like, it's kind of hard to watch sometimes, but I think there's like again, I think there's something weird going on there between like Kanye, Kim, Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, all of them, um, and I'm curious to see how this will pan out. Um, this is just sort of aside, but again, going back to the genotypes of North Africa and the Levant, it. I remember reading the Da Vinci Code when I was in fifth grade. I got it for my birthday. Okay, so I'm like 11 years old, and. Um, that had like a profound effect on just like opening my uh, opening my perception and um I, I guess i never put like two and two together like mary magdalene like i guess is described as having like red hair right she's a whore that has red hair and then i'm thinking to myself and this like literally just occurred to me today and i don't know what triggered it what the hell is a ginger doing in the levant in 20 anno domini you know what i mean like what what is she doing there, you know? Um, and that just, I don't know, it makes me a little bit curious and I kind of want to dive into that a little bit more. Like what would a redheaded woman who is viewed as someone who, um, again, a whore, but I'm guessing it's just someone who like uses sexual energy in a different way. Maybe she is a whore, I don't know. Um, but I just think it's interesting that the ginger in the Levant at that time doesn't really make sense like were there other gingers in the levant at that time i think of like phoenicians you know but at, i don't know i don't know i don't know we're gonna just move on because i'm probably not making much sense anymore um uh where's aoc i haven't heard anything about aoc in a long time has anyone else heard about anything from aoc is she still like working um is she on vacation? Like midterms are like right around the corner and I haven't heard her talk about anything at all. And if anything, I would feel like she would come out. This is like, I don't really understand the left because like they don't, I don't th I don't think they like Jewish people, right? Even though like most Jewish people are on the left, like the left supports Palestine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which is another weird thing because a lot of gay people are on the left and like in Palestine, they'll fucking kill you. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, you would think AOC... I don't know. Maybe that's why she's being, like, hush-hushed right now. Um, because of, like, the Jewish stuff. But I would, think, I would think of anything... I feel like it's the abortion stuff that could, like... Everyone's like, oh, Republican landslide, Republican landslide because of crime. And maybe that's true. Um, but the abortion stuff kind of scares me because a lot of people, a lot of women are like really crazy about that stuff and that makes me a little bit nervous here in wisconsin once the whole like federal thing was lifted we reverted back to the 1865 rule of no abortion even in cases of like rape and incest and blah 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 and i think that's like kind of based in a way so let, let, let's just be real if you are the type of person who's going to go get an abortion a law isn't going to stop you you know like cocaine's illegal but if you want to go find cocaine like you can go find cocaine, you know? So um, it doesn't really, the law doesn't really stop thing. It's more of like a moral attitude to like not killing your child. Uh, and like Kanye's good with the whole abortion thing, you know? Um, but he thinks it's like for black population control. And maybe that's true. I don't know. But uh, you would think AOC would be out there. like, And maybe she is like championing, like rounding people up to get them to go and vote so that they can like, reinstate the abortion stuff i don't really get it the abortion stuff is so creepy to me um but i see a lot of like white girls in this area who are like really gung-ho about that stuff makes me a little bit nervous because like i said this mandela person cannot win or it's over um 
Let's see, just two more things here and then we'll get into some art. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, you know me, I am for more options, not less. Uh, and when it comes to like content on the internet, unfortunately because of censorship, um, like so much really great content has just been hidden away. Not just like from like more crazier people, but like just like in general, like videos you'll want to go back to from like 2014, 2010, 2007, they're just like not there anymore because they got ate up by the censorship machine. And it's really frustrating um, just for like the loss of, but I don't even know if it's lost. I feel like YouTube just like has it hidden away in their own secret library server or something. Um, but the censorship thing, you know? And I, t blah, 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 blah. I'm not even making sense. Uh, the censorship thing, but somehow a lot of like gay content avoids the censorship stuff, even though it's sexually explicit. And I'm again for more is more, more is more. But I'm someone who believes like the homosexual stuff, all that stuff is on the fringe. It's an outlier, and it needs to be like sort of like the drug stuff. Like if you want to go find it, you can go. F you go to the back alley and you can find it. But it doesn't need to be front and center. And YouTube makes a lot of this like really racy gay content front and center and you know me i'm not i'm not shy or anything like that but like some of this stuff it's like why is youtube even like allowing this on youtube and i'm talking like gay bathhouse stuff i'm talking about like sexual stuff like regarding like bottoming and stuff like that again i'm not afraid of that information or anything like that but it's like promoted on youtube and that's very very weird to me um very, very strange to me because you can't even talk about like the Kukarachi or anything like that and you are just slapped down. But like you can talk about like a non dark room gay sex bathroom house stuff and like it's completely fine. So I, I talked about this a little bit on my stream with Sacha this week, but I had like been recommended this travel YouTuber based in the UK. Um, who I guess is a homosexual and because I was like watching some of his videos now all of this like gay content is like flooding my recommendation stuff and I'm just like report 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 because <laughs> it's just like how is this even allowed on here I don't know um, and again I'm all for more is more but it's just like uh, I don't know and I was kind of going back and forth with someone in a live chat yesterday about like the criticisms of like homosexuality and they are like, this is why I'm not on the left and not on the right, because the right people are just, like, people on the right are, like, so fucking naive and, like, stupid in a way, you know? Like, they just throw the Bible at you as if that's, like, a fucking argument, you know? And sure, if you want to use it as maybe part of an argument, a sliver of an argument, go for it. But when it comes to, like, homosexuality and stuff and, like, the criticisms of it, the people on the right, like just like shit the bed every single time like if you want to talk about like criticisms of homosexuality you need to talk about like the increase in tobacco use marijuana use alcohol use heavy drug use then there's just because it's usually like men and men and men are more comfortable with just casual random sex you know so then there's stuff about you know uh, sexual health and then there's the whole sense of like psychological dislocation because um, if you're not someone who believes in the whole rainbow flag and you're not part of that community and you're not part of like the rest of the world it's like where are my people you know and you feel like very alone so there's like all this mental instability and stuff then there's like just getting older and not having like a family you know not having kids and that's like an itch you can't not scratch in a way and you just have to sort of like deal with it and hope that you have like either a career or something else big in your life that can um trump i guess those urges to have like a family and stuff like that um and it, and it all sort of affects like your i don't use mental health but it does you know and you won't hear that from the right as like a criticism you know and that's the stuff that i would be like you should really think about before you come out of the closet. And I don't think you should ever really come out of the closet. I think you should just leave it up to mystery and that people can assume whatever they want, you know, because who the fuck cares anyways. But just to continually, like, throw the Bible at someone, you know, and it just, it's, um, it's, it's boring and it's just, it's just dumb, you know? Like, you're missing, like, a huge opportunity and you're just stuck in this, like, corner of, like, not even Christianity, it's just like, um, like sheepish, sheepish, uh, you just really don't know anything, you know what I mean? Like your brain just sort of like flatlined at a certain point and you just don't, you don't really like think outside the box, your arguments are very, very weak, you know? Um, and again, there are like huge criticisms you can do about against gay culture, homosexuality, etc. But you don't ever talk about those like 
you know, so it's like you could help some of these people by being honest about the situation, but you just continually throw the Bible at them and it's like nothing gets solved, you know? Um, it's, 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 it's sad to me. Um, and it's why, again, I'm not on the left, I'm not on the right, I'm just on my own island of, island of misfit toys, I guess. Um, I don't even know how we got in this subject. Oh, because of that UK gay blogger or whatever. I'm sorry, but I'm just going to talk about this again. Like, he was one of those people that are like, oh, we see all of this green space, so why shouldn't we allow immigrants into our country when, when we have all this room for them to come? And, you know, again, like I said in the live stream with Sacha, they have, like, no understanding that that land is owned by, like, people, you know, that's, like, farmland, and these is, that's their job, that's, like, agriculture, that's where your food comes from. But they don't see that at all. They just see, like, open space without high raises on it, and they just think of it as just free space that, you know, it's just... Yeah, why can't immigrants come and like move into there, you know? Um, and what this is worth, again, I find something fundamentally wrong. Where like in the U.S., you can like it's a it's a bad argument, it's a false argument, but you can use the whole like we're a nation of immigrants thing, you know? Um, but the U.K. doesn't have that, you know? The U.K. doesn't have that at all. So the idea that like all this green space is just for immigrants to come, immigrants to come, there's like no. Um, there's no like fundamental idea that okay even if there is green space maybe in the future if you have child if you have family and a children maybe they like make some money and then that land goes up for sale maybe my children can go and live there and like you know it's still british etc there's none of that it's just that land is for people on the other side of the world to come and use and it's like like what you know it, People are just so fucking stupid, you know? And, like, all these people have their own country already. That's what's so frustrating is, like, they come from Nigeria or Venezuela or Costa Rica or, like, where the fuck these people are coming into our country from? But they already have their own country. And it's like, they don't realize how fucking lucky they are that they have their own culture, their own borders, their own, like, language, you know? And they just come here... I'm going to stop now, and we're going to switch over to some other subjects. Um, oh, this is funny. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. <laughs> this is... Um... <laughs> LMAO, it's Halloween, and I always fucking, that video always comes <laughs> comes up for me, but this is where, like, you gotta give the gays a little bit of credit for being, like, a little bit creative, you know, to have, like, Voldemort, but, like, in drag, dancing to Dangerous Woman by Ariana Grande, like, it's creepy, and it's weird, and it doesn't make much sense, but, like, it's funny, or whatever. Anyway, so the next subject, um, I don't really know how to approach, because I feel like this is gonna get, I mean, I just got copywritten right now by playing that, but, um, you guys know that I'm not like a World War II person, like at all. I'm a World War One person. Um, I've been trying to marry into the Hohenzollern family for a long time. But I was um, reading more about the Wotan. Oh, hi, Oscar. How are you, Mr. Oscar? Are you coming down? Huh? Sorry, my cat's acting a little out of sorts right now. I was reading more about like the Wotan. Um, which I guess the Norse equivalent would be Odin. Uh, I think they're like the same thing. Um, just the Wotan is like the Germanicized version of it. But I was reading more about like Carl Jung and Nietzsche and these ideas of like the Wotan, etc. And they it came I came across this concept of the I'm gonna butcher this, but like the Volk-ish movement, as in like I'm guessing like folk, like F O L K. And I'm just gonna this is gonna come from like Wikipedia, so it's a little it's a little frustrating, but um, we're just gonna like read through some of this if that's okay. Uh, la 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 la. Let me get this moved over here. Okay. Um, so the Volkish movement is a German ethno-nationalist movement active from the late 19th century through the Nazi era 
um, erected on the idea of blood and soil, inspired by the one body metaphor um, and by the idea of naturally grown communities and unity. It was characterized by organicism, racialism, populism, agrarianism, romantic nationalism, and as a consequence of a growing exclusive and ethnic connotation by anti-Semitism from, from the 1900s onwards. Um, Volkish nationalists generally consider the Jews to be an alien people who belong to a different Volk or race from the Germans. And this is what's so frustrating. It's because, like, they are a fucking different race. Like, they would say that. They're fucking Hebrew. You know, they're, 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 they are a different race. So it's like they're a different race. You say that they're a different race, that you yourself are a different race, but somehow that's an anti-Semitic thing. It's like what and i don't know it just seems kind of interesting because these are like all the subjects that like i find kind of interesting you know agrarianism romantic nationalism stuff like that i think it's like kind of cool you know um uh so it was uh not a homo not a homogenous set of beliefs but um it, it rose in opposition to the socio-cultural challenges of modernity again right up my alley um it's uh inspired by the idea of a national rebirth uh, inspired by the traditions of the ancient Germans, which had been reconstructed on a romantic basis by the adherents of the philosophy. Um, this is what's interesting. The re this rebirth would have been achieved by either Germaniz Germanizing Christianity, an Abrahamic and Semitic religion that spread into Europe, or by rejecting any Christian heritage that existed in Germany in order to revive pre-Christian Germanic paganism. I find that very interesting because you know me, I'm all about the blonde, blue-eyed Jesus, but not even like the Jesus of the Levant, but more Jesus as like a traveler, Jesus sort of like showing up in like grail legends, you know, in like Arthurian legends, stuff like that. I always find really interesting. Um, the term is used to de designate groups that consider human beings essentially performed by blood and inherited characteristics. Um, da, 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 da. They'll talk about like the Holocaust and they'll say like six million Jews died and millions of others. It's like weird when they talk about the Holocaust, but um, uh, this will be just like the last little paragraph I'll read. Um, a cauldron of beliefs, fears, and hopes that found expression in various movements and were often articulated in an emotional tone. Um, it's a national collectivity inspired by common creative energy, feelings, and a sense of individuality. These metaphysical qualities were supposed to define the unique cultural essence of the German people. Um, again, they keep talking about it as like racist, racist, but it's uh, a sense of German superiority to a spiritual resistance to the evils of industrialization and the atomization of modern man, which I totally agree with here a spiritual resistance to the evils of industrialization and the atomization of modern man, right on the money. And these people understood that like over a hundred years ago, you know, um, the Volkish thinkers tended to idealize the myth of an original nation. Why is that a myth? There's obviously an original nation, otherwise they wouldn't fucking exist. Um, this original nation could still be found at the time in the rural regions of Germany, a form of primitive democracy freely subjected to their natural elites uh, that, the notion of a people, um, a racial essence, uh, just, yeah. Um, the movement combines sentimental patriotic interest in German folklore, local history, and a back-to-the-land anti-urban populism with many parallels in the writing of William Morris. Um, uh, it's... Uh, the Volkish authors imagined a spiritual solution in... Um, perceived as an authentic, intuitive, even primitive, blah, 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 an alignment of the primordial and cosmic order. Again, I don't understand a lot of this stuff, but a lot of these um, subjects are what I'm like really interested in. And again, these, um, these German people, I'm not German per se, I'm Bohemian, um, which is like, like right there, it's like adjacent, 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 adjacent. Um, I guess you would call it like Czech now, but the specific area that my grandparents are from is Bohemia. Um, I have a little bit of Dutch in me as well, but I'm Bohemian and uh, so I'm not even fucking German, but a lot of these concepts I find are like right up my, especially when it comes to like art and stuff, you guys know this, you know, it's like right, like this sort of like ancient German folklore, um, sort of this cosmic spirituality, agrarianism, paganism, I guess. Paganism kind of has a bad connotation nowadays, but um, I thought that was so cool, you know, but 
it has like the fucking swastika and the like the nazism written all over it so it's like you can't even touch this subject without you know hate uh but i just thought it was interesting and i don't know why i never came across this before probably because like i said i usually stay away from the world war ii stuff because it's just not that interesting to me um but yeah anyways let's just look at some art before i have to go here thank you for <laughs> 40 minutes of jibber jabber um this one you're probably familiar with is this bruegel uh yeah peter bruegel the elder uh this is hunters in the snow not exactly my aesthetic let me switch over here uh but we love love this painting it makes me nostalgic i love uh just the story here and what you can sort of suppose from uh, the hunters coming back. It doesn't look like they caught anything. The dogs are there. They have like the little snow town. Um, I don't know. I just like this painting. Again, Peter Bruegel, the elder. I'm sure you are all very familiar with it. Um, again, stylistically, it's not what I usually gravitate towards, but I appreciate it nonetheless. And what a pretty, pretty world they lived in in 1565 and like what the hell happened this is why again like why is it so bad to reject industrialization and the atomization of modern man when we came from greatness you know it blows my mind um james alexander walker i guess painted this painting it's called halt de dragons which i really enjoy um 1870 there's not much written here about i guess he's a british painter of French descent, known for his battle scenes. Um, there's nothing really in Wikipedia about him, but I really enjoyed this painting. I'm, you know, biased because I love horses, but I love the sort of uniform and uh, the helmet here is really pretty with like the hair and everything. Halt de Dragons. Um, I don't know. I like this painting a lot. I feel like we're gonna have to leave this guy, Jean. Uh, Leon Jerome for another video. I'm just gonna keep this tab up because he has so much work that I wanna talk about. This is called The Two Majesties and it's actually, I've seen this before in person. It's at the Milwaukee Art Museum downtown. Um, but he has a lot of good paintings that I wanna go over. But we're gonna save him for another time because he, the, the breadth of his work is just, it's gonna take me another fucking hour. Um, another painting here that I enjoy, this is called The Duel After the Masquerade. Um, this is one of this Jerome guy's paintings, um, but it's interesting. I like it. Again, not my favorite, but the background kind of has this um, Kas David Kaspar Frederick or Kaspar David Frederick or whatever his name is, the German romanticist painter. The background kind of has that sort of eerie, um, ghostly quality that I really enjoy. Um, and just sort of how this is set up, I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, again, not necessarily one of my favorite paintings of all time, but I can appreciate it nonetheless. And I kind of like the title of The Duel After the Masquerade and like what they're wearing and everything. I think that's kind of interesting. Um, the last one here we'll talk about is Strike of the Ballerinas um, by Vanderway, I think his name was. I might have gotten this wrong, but Strike of the Ballerinas right here is, it's a pretty painting. I'm biased because I enjoy ballerinas and the whole sort of feminine aesthetic of ballerinas and all of that um but i just really i, it, I enjoy this painting a lot i like the old sort of tubbier frenchman like smoking a cigarette and these other all the ladies sort of gathered behind the one strike of the ballerinas um i don't know i like that painting a lot it reminds me of this uh short gobeline film which i definitely recommend you all see it's six minutes long and it's called louise um i've talked about this before but i just really really enjoy this short film and it reminds me of uh, this strike of the ballerinas painting reminds me of this short film so there's some art for you i think i crossed off everything on my list here Yes. Oh, I'm a Disney Plus girl in an HBO Max world. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, Halloween this weekend, I'm like trying to figure out what to do. I, the last time I went out in Milwaukee was Labor Day weekend and literally there was a shooting at the bar <laughs> that I went to. So I'm like, I don't really know if I want to go out downtown Milwaukee, especially at this time. 
but who knows i kind of want to just people watch and look at the costumes and stuff i don't really have any costume ideas myself i was toying with the idea of just wearing fur and going as some sort of viking um i also like the idea of going as like the angel gabriel or Raphael or michael or something and just you know he shall smite the wicked and plunge them into the fiery pit I also wanted to go as a Confederate soldier, but if I do that in Milwaukee, I will definitely get shot. And, um, I don't know, maybe I'll just look hot and go as your dad's wet dream? <laughs> I don't really know, but I gotta figure out a costume because, um, some friends are doing something tonight and I gotta figure out if I'm gonna A, go, and B, if I do go, what to do, what to do, um, I just get, like, nervous because, like, the temperature isn't, like, too cold here right now and... Usually the colder temperatures keeps some of like the mogatos inside, but since it's a little bit warmer, I get nervous that they're going to be running amok, and especially because it's like Halloween weekend, I just get like, uh, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, but I hope you all have a great rest of your